Bunny Gang by Jill. Jane. Jane and Dale. Bear. And, and Bear. Yeah, so the Easter Bunny Gang. This is an old story. It was one of my favorite stories when I was a kid. That's me. 1987 is when I first read this book. Mm -hmm. It was a long time ago, Apollo. Long time ago. And it's even the... It's the 40... It's the 2024 now. Yeah. But this is a good book for the well, ages because and, it's Easter coming up, right? Yeah. And it, today's the second day of spring. It is the second day of spring, and this is a spring book. And Easter's coming up. So let's see what this Easter story is about. The first day of Easter egg painting season had arrived. Easter was just a few weeks away. The bunnies had worked hard for months, gathering and hauling eggs to the storage vaults beneath the old cottonwood tree. It was a lovely spring morning to hold a painting party, but the party was not to be, for that was the year of the big burglary. The members of the Easter Bunny Gang awoke early that morning. They raced to the cottonwood tree, eager to see how the new egg-dipping computer worked. They could hardly wait to begin decorating the eggs that would all roll out, all dyed with bright colors. When they reached the tree, Violet noticed that something was wrong. Oh my, she gasped. Someone has left the door wide open. Willie Rigby, Rosemary, and Barnaby Bunny cautiously peered through the doorway. Slowly, the bunnies made their way down the dark, winding passageway that led to the egg vaults. Every door along the tunnel had been left open, but nothing was out of place. The great mountains of eggs were neatly stacked just as the bunnies had left them. Further along the tunnel, they stepped inside the painting room. Everything seemed to be in order. The computer was all set to go. Aprons were hanging from their hooks. The egg designs were pinned to the walls. But something was missing. Suddenly, the bunnies knew what it was. Our paint is gone, they cried out. Someone has stolen our paint. Rosemary sounded the alarm. Rigby discovered the first clue. Hmm, he said thoughtfully. It looks like the thieves dropped the paint can while they were making their getaway. He picked up a magnifying glass and examined the puddle closely. The bunnies crowded around. Peering through the glass, they saw footprints that led across the room and out the doorway. I have a theory about this, said Rigby. At that moment, the thumpity-thumping sounds of many rabbits' feet echoed throughout the passageway as the older bunnies, older bunnies hurried to the scene of the burglary. "'What's going on here?' demanded Mr. Wuzzlefuzz, the first to arrive. "'Who sounded the alarm?' The other bunnies crowded into the room, just in time to hear Violet say, "'Stolen paint!' A great hullabaloo broke out, drowning out the rest of her story. "'Thieves? Who could have done such a thing? We can't deliver plain white eggs to the children?' Easter will be ruined! None of the older bunnies noticed the strange footprints or bothered listening to Rigby's theory about them. The young bunnies hopped out into the passageway. Let's follow the villains while their trail is red hot, said Rigby. These footprints should lead us directly to our missing paint and the missing paint thieves. The bunnies all agreed. Come on, gang, said Rosemary. Let's follow Rigby. The group fell in line behind Rigby. The trail continued past the cottonwood tree, along the river bank, over the hill, and into the forest. The red footprints were getting fainter and fainter, and soon they disappeared completely. And now what do we do? asked Willie. Oh my! exclaimed Violet. 
The bunny gang had been watching the trail so closely they had not noticed the forest around them. When they stopped and looked, they were shocked by what they saw. Oh, what did they see, Apollo? That. Graffiti everywhere that says, Phooey! Easter eggs stink! Down with the Easter eggs! Easter bunnies are no good! Foo on eggs! Foo on eggs! Yeah. Boo hiss. Easter, Easter bunnies. Bunny are fake. fake. And what's this one? Stinko Stink rabbits. Rabbit. Boo no on, bunnies. on bunnies. Rabbits go away. No more what? No more eggs. Easter eggs, yeah. And down, down with Easter eggs. Eggs, yeah. So, whoever stole their paint doesn't like these bunnies very much, do they? Mm -hmm. Hmm. And one says, Easter egg stinked. Yeah. Everything in the forest was covered with scribbling. How could anybody do such a thing? said Violet. They even used our paint. What do they mean? They don't like Easter eggs, said Rosemary. Everyone likes Easter eggs. Why don't they like us bunnies? asked Barnaby. We must stop these vandals before they destroy any more of the forest, said Rigby. The bunny gang raced back to the cottonwood tree as fast as they could hop. They were amazed to find the older rabbits still in the same place, all talking at once and worrying about what would happen on Easter morning. But no one was talking about a way to solve the problem. The young bunnies knew it was impossible to get their intention. They hopped down the tunnel to the cellar in search of a quiet place to think. They gathered around a dusty, wobbly old table, and Rigby began to speak. We must think of a plan to stop the destruction of our forest, cried Rigby. We must remove the ugly graffiti, and, most of all, we must find our paint before it is all used up. To make his point, Rigby pounded the tabletop with his paw, sending up a dusty cloud that started everybody sneezing. When the bunnies settled down, Rigby asked for suggestions. They all thought and thought and thought, but not one of them could think of a plan. Tired from the morning's excitement, Barnaby leaned back to rest against the old egg-dipping machine. It had been replaced by the new computer and stored in the cellar. His paw accidentally hit the starter switch. With a pop and a sputter and a bang, the dipping arms cranked into motion. Soon the old tub was chugging at such a furious speed that it began dancing around the cellar. Barnaby was so startled he shot up into the air and banged his head on the ceiling beam. That's the answer, shouted Rigby. What a wonderful idea, Barnaby. You've saved the day. It is? Uh, oh, what is? I have? asked Barnaby, looking terribly confused. Don't you see, said Rigby, hopping up and down and pointing to the dancing machine. All we need to do is make a few adjustments, an addition here and there. The bunny gang set to work immediately. First they drew up their plan, and then they cleaned off the workbench and brought out the tools. They had no time to lose. Tools. Nails. The bunnies worked late into the night, and just before sunrise, they threw open the door of the cottonwood tree and dragged out a large, mysterious-looking contraption. Slowly, they made their way along the riverbank. They pulled it over the hill into the unsightly forest, covered with ugly drawings and scribblings. The bunnies trudged on, trying not to look at the shameful sight. Finally, 
They came upon a beautiful place deep in the forest. It was just what they had been searching for. There was no trace of graffiti there. The bunny gang had no time to waste. They quickly hung some signs they had made, and the bunnies pushed their contraption out of sight behind the bushes, and then they hid and waited. What did some of their own signs say, Apollo? Don't paint over there. Don't paint these. Don't paint this area. Do not enter. Do don't, don't touch. That's, That's a no no. Don't do don't it. Do it. Post no bills. Post no bills. Keep away. Don't paint. And no graffiti, no graffiti allowed. allowed. Yeah. So, do you think those signs are meant to trick whoever's been doing the painting? No. I think it is. They're trying to so, yeah. make them angry. Make them angry. But we'll see. Before long, they heard a loud commotion. A group of scruffy animals appeared on the pathway carrying buckets of paint and brushes and spray cans. When they saw the signs, they stopped. Where did these signs come from? Who says we can't paint here? The bunnies heard them muttering. Then the vandals dipped their paintbrushes into the buckets, opened the spray cans, and began to paint all over the signs. I bet those bunnies had something to do with this. We'll show them. Nobody can tell us what to do, said one of the troublemakers, kicking over a sign. We can paint wherever we want. Just as he was about to spray a tree with a can of purple paint, the bunny gang pulled the covering away from their contraption and flipped the starter switch. A giant robot whirled into action. Huge mechanical arms reached over and around the bushes, lifting the startled vandals off their feet and swinging them into the air. Mechanical fingers snatched up the paint and brushes, and before they knew what was happening, the paint thieves found themselves dipped, brushed, and sprayed as brightly as an assortment of Easter eggs. Let me go! Help! Put me down! yelled the captives, but the robot held them high above the ground. The bunnies sprang out from their hiding place. You won't be released until you tell us where you've hidden the rest of our Easter egg paint, said Rigby. Okay, okay, we'll tell you. Don't hurt us, begged the frightened animals, squirming uncomfortably. You must also promise to scrub off all the graffiti and clean up the forest, said Rigby. That afternoon... A most unusual parade marched up to the old cottonwood tree. The older rabbits rushed to greet the young heroes. For the first time, they were willing to listen to the bunny gang. The young bunnies told them all about their adventures. When the paint was safely brought back to the painting room, the bunnies turned to their captives. Mr. Wuzzlefuzz paced back and forth in front of the group. He looked at them sternly over the top of his glasses. "'What made you do such a dreadful thing?' he asked. "'You almost spoiled Easter for all the boys and girls.' The troublemakers hung their heads with shame. "'Maybe Easter would be spoiled for some of the boys and girls,' said Molly Mink in a small voice. "'But we never get Easter eggs anyway.' "'Stuff and nonsense and fiddle-dee-dee,' Mr. Wuzzlefuzz blustered. "'That's pure poppycock. All boys and girls get Easter eggs on Easter morning.' "'Everyone except for us forest critters. We're kids, too,' said Spike Porcupine, wiping away a tear. "'Why, this is terrible,' sputtered Mr. Wuzzlefuzz. "'Of course there are children in the forest, too. How could we be so thoughtless?' Rigby quickly spoke up. I think we owe these kids an apology, he said, turning to the forlorn animals. I have an idea. If we help, if you help us decorate our Easter eggs, we will help you clean up the forest. 
Everyone thought that was a wonderful idea, and the egg painting party finally began. From that Easter on, the bunnies always remembered the children of the forest with their gift of eggs. And that is the end of the Easter Bunny Gang. The end! What did you think of that, Apollo? Pretty good. Yeah, is that a happy Easter after all? And the animals of the forest also get to celebrate now. Mm -hmm. All right. Are we going to say adios or are we going to say happy Easter? Happy Easter. Happy Easter. <laughs>